Hi, my name is Eric Peden, and today we're going to demonstrate the hero graft placement as we do it here at Houston Methodist Hospital. So typically our patients come in with already a tunnel dialysis catheter in place and challenge central veins with either occlusions or stenosis. We find the most common reason that we put in hero grafts is because they have central venous stenosis or occlusion around an existing catheter. Today we're going to demonstrate this in a cadaver lab. We have a separate outflow component and sort of a placeholder is what would usually be the tunnel dialysis catheter. And as you can see, that's tunneled across the chest and exits in the infraclavicular area, which is sort of the common spot. And we've already made an incision over the neck where the catheter inserts into the jugular vein. So typically what we'll do is come down and first image where the distal end of that catheter is at. Great, and we can see there that the catheter terminates down in the low right atrium or sort of at the atrial to inferior vena cava junction. Let's pan up just a bit. Perfect right there. So that's good because sometimes the catheters are completely malpositioned with catheters going into the opposite brachiocephalic vein or somewhere else. And we want to make sure that we've got a good path down there. If we do, then we'll start off with our arterial access. And arterial access for us is typically a more proximal brachial artery to try and reduce the chance of steal. Once we have a catheter in position already, we know that the outflow component's going to go. And really it's then about the arterial inflow and then planning how the graft's going to go around. So we'll start then with the outflow component by doing a cut down on the neck and look for where the catheter is at and entering the jugular vein. Uh, we'll just be able to grab that and have a hemostat. So we'll take that then and get access to that. And typically at this point we've left the exit site of the tunnel dialysis catheter covered so that it's not exposed to the rest of the field. We'll then take some heavy scissors and fully transect the catheters in there. We don't mess with this part at all until the rest of the procedure is done. That way we don't have contamination from the exit site to our new hero graft device. At this point then we'll take a catheter and wire, we'll start with a wire typically, and go down uh, to the inferior vena cava. So we'll typically start with a hydrophilic wire or a glide wire. Get that down below and into the inferior vena cava as best we can. And here we can see that our wire has gone nicely down to the inferior vena cava. That's not always so easy and sometimes that's one of the more difficult portions of the procedure. At this point then we'll switch out for a stiffer wire, typically an Amplatz wire. We'll take out the indwelling portion of the catheter, use a diagnostic catheter such as a burn. So at this point then we'll pass the diagnostic catheter over the previously placed wire down into the inferior vena cava and get a stiffer wire. That's really the key portion of this case, is having a stiff wire in the inferior vena cava. If you have that, then you can do this procedure safely. So we'll pass that down with fluoroscopic guidance until we can see the wire down the inferior vena cava, and then get this out. Great, so Becca, let's move back up. Perfect down just a little, good right there. So at this point then, we have a stiff wire going down to the inferior vena cava through the occlusions. At this point then, you have to decide how to get the outflow component to pass over the wire. There are two different methods. There's the on-label use, where the instructions for use are published about that. That's using a large peel-away sheath with a series of dilators. That certainly can be done that direct that way, but it's not our preferred method. Uh, we're concerned that we could have potential for air embolus when we place this peel away sheath and that that can let air escape into the catheter and down to the atrium. We found that an easier way to do this that I feel like is safer is actually using the balloon dilation method first. So we'll take a larger balloon, like an eight millimeter balloon, It helps in these cases to have a long eight millimeter balloon. Today for demonstration, we only have an eight by 40, but typically an eight by 80 would be something that we would use for this. So we can see the balloon is positioned down within the atrium. And we wanna dilate all the way from the atrium up into our skin incision. Come down. 
So eight millimeters is plenty to create a tract down into the atrium. All right, so essentially we would then do serial dilations all the way to the puncture site. For this case, I'm gonna just I'm gonna pull this back. We can see it coming all the way up. And if we look here at the skin mark, we can see actually where the balloon's coming right out of the skin. We'll inflate in this area as well. We find that usually we don't need high pressures for this. And commonly there's an area where there's some stenosis as it enters the vein. Pan up a little bit, Becca. Great, in this case, you can see that's fully inflated. Okay, let it down. Once our balloon's deflated, we can safely remove that. Typically we need to hold pressure to prevent bleeding at the exit site. But that's very manageable with just digital control. So for the next part then, to make this catheter transition smoothly, what we do is put a balloon partway outside the catheter so that we can transition more smoothly. You can see this is a six millimeter balloon. It's important to remember that the inner diameter of the outflow component for the herograft is only five, so you don't want to blow this up to profile. So what we'll typically do is hook up our insufflator and blow it up to four atmospheres. And after doing that, we can see that we've eliminated the step off, but we've not over distended the ring. So at this point, it's a multi handed maneuver because we want somebody to hold the catheter and balloon together at the same time introducing and then pinning the wire in the back. And we'll do this under fluoroscopic guidance. And as we do, we'll usually find that this transition will pass pretty smoothly. A little twisting usually will help navigate that through. You know, I can see the inner dot of that uh, within the right atrium. So now we'll deflate the balloon. change our collimation to get some of the lung field out. Now with the balloon deflated, we can remove that and remove the wire. At this point then it would be bleeding backwards or aspirating air, so we wanna control that with this. Um, so at that point then our outflow component is in and now it's moving over to where our connector is gonna go and completing the rest of the procedure. So the common teaching is that we make our incision here in the infraclavicular space. Again, it's important that it's well away from the exit side of the catheter. More commonly though, I found that I like to put that over the shoulder, over the lateral shoulder here, so that I have less motion. I worry that we could have kinking as the arm's moving, that there could be kinking in between the outflow component and the graft that's gonna be connected to it. Now what we don't want is a failure where it's a problem because of movement here. At this area here, over the shoulder, typically there's not any flexion that happens between the components. So commonly then I'll make it on the upper outer shoulder. It's important that we're above the fascia as we make our tunnel. So very emaciated uh, persons, you can see that that's a challenge. And I'll typically just make that with a clamp. Nothing too special about the tunnel. We're good there. Heavy scissors back. And I'll just control the catheter then with digital control. Cutting this at an angle helps with tunneling to some degree. And grasp our catheter like such. It's really important to come back and check where the tip of the catheter and outflow component is at because we don't want it to be too deep or too superficial. We really want it right in the right mid atrium and if it's hard to see where the atrium is, you can do a contrast injection or look at the right hemidiaphragm and compare there. Uh, so that looks like really good position. And then we know there's not a kink because we can see where the track of this is at. And that looks really good. At this point, then we're gonna think about tunneling our graft up to there and doing our connection. So with our stiff wire now down in the inferior vena cava, it's time to get our outflow component in. The way to do that according to the instructions for use that's approved on the device is to use this stylet Basically, the stylet can straighten out and provide some support for the outflow component as it gets in. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a step off here, which sometimes makes this catch. It's important at this point to do pre-dilation. 
that comes with a series of dilators. So we'll start with the smallest. And again, their fluoroscopic guidance, very important that we watch all these things pass through because we don't want to injure structures inside the mediastinum. So it comes with two dilators, the smaller and then the larger of the two. And we'll pass this again under fluoroscopic guidance. Pressure on the exoscient as we withdraw it, when bleeding or air embolism. Next is the PLOA sheath. There are two PLOA sheets that come with the kit. I prefer the longer one so that I can control digitally and prevent bleeding or uh, air being aspirated, but the shorter one is also available. So again, this is a large device. This is a 20 French PLOA sheath. We're very important to watch this under fluoroscopy. And it passes freely down to the right atrium. So at this point, then, one concern is that as we remove this dilator, that we could have air escape uh, from the atmosphere down to the patient, causing an air embolism, or for the patient to have bleeding. So commonly, we'll have uh, this plug available that we can put into the PLOA sheet to prevent that, and at the same time, get some saline on uh, hand so that we can drip that, and that if anything was to be aspirated, it would be saline instead of air. So as we get close, now we'll inject some saline under there, and then insert our plug. And at that point, then, we should be safe from either bleeding or air embolization. So with plug in place then, the PLOA sheath prepared, then we'll go ahead and put our catheter outflow component with the stylet inside. So we'll rapidly move to move this through. And now again, under fluoroscopic visualization, advance this down into the right atrium. That looks great. So now we'll go ahead and do our PLOA sheath. It's important to have an assistant hold the outflow component catheter so that it doesn't uh, get withdrawn as you peel this away and do a couple of spot checks along the way. It's very helpful. Also important to do the PLOA sheath outside the body rather than doing that inside. That way you don't increase the size of the venotomy. Confirm our position again. At this point, we can remove the stylet and the wire. You'll notice that I'm using a large clamp on this, and that can be done only to portions of the catheter that you plan to discard. If you plan to use that portion of the catheter, you should never put a metal clamp like this on it, in which case there's an approved catheter clamp that comes with the device that's soft enough that it won't be traumatic to the fibers that are in here. So go ahead and cut this at an angle for tunneling. Twisting motion usually can help you get through. And again, this is a discard portion of the catheter, so we'll clamp that. Again, very important to check that the distal endpoint is in the proper position. And we'd like that a little bit higher, again, right in the right mid atrium. At this point, then, we've got two different methods for connecting our graft component to the outflow component. There's a traditional hero graft that has the connector on there uh, that we can use like this. I'll show that now. one of these. Sorry. So more commonly using a sheath tunneler, in this case just a large clamp, but more commonly a Kellywick or sheath tunneler to get this catheter and graft component together. So we'll pull the graft into position. Now we want to think about connecting this to our outflow component. Again, we want to check the position of our endpoint inside. That looks good. Take heavy straight scissors, and it's important that we make this nice and perpendicular to the outflow component. This slides together with a friction fit and uses the two flanges that are inside to get good apposition. And very important that this sits flush against the connector piece. We'll check our outflow component positioning. You can see it's a little bit deep, so we'll pull that back some. That looks good. Now we'll pull our graph through. And again, checking our outflow component. Very important you check the outflow component final position several times so that it doesn't get malpositioned before you're in an area where you can't adjust it further. 
So if you're going to use a graph that's not pre-attached to the connector device, if you're going to use an early access graph in combination with the outflow component, you can do that now with the use of the Ally kit that has this rapid adapter to it. It's important that we pre-dilate the end so that the adapter can go in. In this case, this is actually the hero graph that comes with, but again, you can use it with an early access graph. The list of approved devices is available. Then we'll insert this rapid adapter. And again, it's got the clamp portion, which goes onto the graft. It's important that this as well goes all the way to the hub and hits smoothly against the flange. Then we'll close this, use a clamp to tighten it further. and make sure it's fully closed. After that, it's on very securely and will not easily come off. At that point then, similar to any other graft, you can use tunneler of your choice. Pull the graft through. And then again, connect to the output component. If you've pulled back the outflow component some to give yourself extra length, it's very important that you check the outflow component final position internally. You can see here it's come back slightly, so we'll readvance it some. It travels very smoothly with the silicone coating and then position our connector. After that, then it's telling your graft around your preferred arterial inflow source and doing your anastomosis. Following this, we like to close all of our incisions, put skin glue on those to make sure they're well sealed, and then lastly, remove the old catheter from the exit site. Thank you for watching this video.